Okay, okay, let me move some stuff off the screen. No, not that. Okay, fine. We'll leave, we'll leave the maid. Why not? Okay, trials report, at trials report on Twitter. Am I not following them? I am following them. Good. Okay. They gave class data from this week of trials so far. It's going to change, obviously, when we get to next Tuesday. So I'll, I might revisit this video by then. But this had some compelling evidence about the meta today. So I think the thumbnail is going to show like the percent usage. And I'm just going to talk about my first impressions on this and see how my predictions in the meta scale with what the population is actually using. Now an important distinction to make is that this is the entire trials population and not just the good players, not just the top 1%. It also doesn't include the control playlist, etc. Just trials. So the first stat we see, follow the mouse cursor, sorry for those on mobile, is that Hunter is at a 43% usage. This doesn't surprise me whatsoever. Even if I didn't think Hunter was the best, it's the most comfortable class, so it's always going to have slightly higher usage than the other two. I'm a little surprised that Titan is more played than Warlock, but then again, it's Arc 3.0 season, and... Due to a recency effect, people usually play the best of the new, and the best of the new is definitely Arc Titan, which is why you see it at 22.6%, which is matching Night Stalker, which I do think, Void Hunter, which is the actual best. So, it's not just Invis, it's not just Radar Manip, it's visibility and the transparency of Invis that makes it so obnoxious as well as the way that a lot of people play to get matches over with quick and still get wins, is special weapon joust, which means run at each other and roll the dice well, with invisibility. And that's the winning playstyle right now for a lot of teams, so it makes sense that you see this at 22.6. But what tips it over the edge is the fact that you combine Wormhaus Crown at 6.2% and Gear Falcon's Hel Helberg at 5.7%, and then... Kepri Sting at 1.4, which I think is on the rise. As more people lose to it, more people will realize, I need a Kepri Sting build, and they will use that. Also, a shout out to Dragon Shadow. Uh, Masakumo was telling me you hit him with a bow and then switch to the Glaive to clean up, and I found it's really effective, and to be honest, I liked it more with Wish Ender, and I think that could also be on the rise if this meta persists for a while. So let's explore that. Why is Wormhaus Crown used probably on Night Stalker or Solar Hunter? My answer is because your TTK doesn't really change with Forerunner, which is the most used weapon. Let me go to destinytrialsreport.com or trials.report. We're going to see. Top used weapon, Forerunner, Drang, Arbalist, No Time, Funnel Web, BXR Battler, Lorenz Driver, Macabre, Peace of Mind, and Ostringer. Ostringer is just barely... <laughs> hanging on there. I'll talk my piece about the weapon meta. Already did in a previous video, but this is pretty in line with what I expected. Forerunner is kind of a map dependent pick. I didn't expect it to be literally number one, but here we are. The reason I think it's number one is because sidearms are the best primary, and Arvalis has a charge time. Forerunner, you can team shot at a distance. If Forerunner is the top weapon, I expect Wormhust to outperform gear. Falcon, even though I think Gear Falcon is ultimately stronger. Gear Falcon doesn't change the time to kill. Wormhouse gets your health back. If you have three invis on your team, you have multiple ways of proccing invis, so using your dodge to heal or be invis is just super good. Stompy's at 11.9. It's a very powerful exotic. I would argue the most powerful for those invis flanks. Like if you go to Drewski's Twitch stream, you will see him put Stompies into full effect and be extremely um, uh, good at flanking, getting meaningful damage in, and just being able to rotate quick, break some ankles. That's the point of Stompies. Yes, it sucks that they got the minus 50 AE penalty, but you can mitigate that by choosing your weapons wisely or just accepting that you're never going to hit a yellow number in the air. Having negative 50 AE doesn't mean your shots don't register, period. It just means it's going to be a body shot significantly more often than not so it doesn't surprise me that stompies are at the top these are always going to be a comfort pick dune marchers i think are more than just a comfort pick yes it's the sprint speed exotic but the melee chain 
a lot of players rely on for making a clutch 1v3. And that's why I think Dune Marchers will always be there. What surprises me is that both Peregrine Greaves and Peacekeepers outnumber the Antaeus Wards. Peregrine at 3%, Peacekeepers at 2.3%, and Dune Marchers at 9.9%, but I'm going to call it 10% for the rest of the video. I'm so, I need to know where Antaeus Wards falls on this because they are obnoxiously strong. I think Gear Falcon level strong. I will say that. And they're just not used as much for some reason. Then again, Kepri's is at 1.4, and I would argue that in the Trials meta, it's maybe even better than Wormhusk and Gear Falcon, and you borderline need one on your team with an Arbalist to compete. So moving on for the Warlocks, we have Ophidian Aspects at 10.3, and Transversive Steps at 4.2. I think Transversives are the comfort pick, and Ophidians are the meta pick, mostly because of the melee lunge distance, but the AE and handling is just icing on the cake. Warlocks are represented at 9.7% Dawnblade and 6.8% um, Arc Stormcaller. I think, again, this is the recency effect. It's Arc 3.0 season, and people are going to try it out anyway. The Dead Messenger strategy is very popular. I don't notice it as much because I play a very aerial playstyle and just jump over them and kind of laugh at them, but they still get me sometimes, so it doesn't surprise me that it's at 6.8%. You know, like, what actually does surprise me... Uh, uh, yeah, no, what you were talking about. Let Elite Arch. 4K chime in here. Sorry if I didn't introduce that earlier in a voice chat. <laughs> um, Arc 3.0 is surprisingly higher than I thought than Stasis, even though... Oh, we'll get to like Stasis eventually here. Even though for a good month, uh, I've been testing with Arc 3.0, and I just don't see, like, the use of it other than the slide melee. So I don't understand why it's still higher than Stasis or even Void. That's the one that's confusing to me. Also, Warlock only has two exotics on here. That's, that's <laughs> actually kind of funny. Just wait until Astrocyte Verse is the number one, and then you see Void <laughs> at like 1% usage. That's my dream. <laughs> yep. And then that's also Sir Midas chiming in here if he feels like it. I just saw this information on Twitter feed and just had to make a video immediately of my first impressions. I haven't played Trials this weekend. I have been uh, commentating it, watching other streams and commentating while I'm playing PvE because I am hunting for the Macabre Sniper. After some uh, damage testing, I realized the Macabre is a crazy good sniper. I, I would rank it if we're ranking all the snipers in the game. Macabre is the number one snipe in the game. So it's more valuable for my time to be farming Macabre than battling it out with the other Kepri Sting Arbalist users in uh, Trials. In the Flawless Pool, you're not going to see this exact distribution. It's going to be more like you see mostly more Kepri Sting. You're going to see more Gear Falcon, more Worm Husk, more Hunters in general, less Titans, less Warlocks. That's how the meta is going to play out. Pretty much what I said in that prediction video. Again, this is the whole population, so the numbers are going to look a little bit different. Omnioculus, I want to mention, is still a really good pick, but you need maps with close quarter hallways, and I think Burnout does offer that. And the reason I say that is because you throw a smoke at your feet, you make the whole team invis, and you refund the smoke. The smoke stays down, so you get to cover a flank for free, cover a radar ping for free without costing anything. And in the heat of a very aggressive team, having the smoke uh, economy can win some matches. So Omni is really, really good. Also, that little bit of damage resistance absolutely makes a difference. I don't think it goes away. I think on some maps, it is not the play. On Widow's Court, where people can avoid tight corridors, Omni probably isn't as good as going Kepri Sting. So my advice, you can skip on Omni Oculus. You don't have to have a build anymore. But consider it if the map is like Endless Veil, Wormhaven, etc. I think a tangent I didn't quite finish was Dune Marchers being a comfort pick. I think Syntheseps are also a comfort pick, more than effectiveness. I think Syntheseps are the most effective when you use Ballistic Slam. And if you were going to do Syntheseps Shoulder Charge, you'd just use Peregrine Greep, which does make sense. Even, even then, though, with uh, Arc 3.0 Titan, as long as you have Knockout and Break Their Shields, and I think you can do it with... Um... I already forgot the melee name, but... Thunderclap? No, Ballistic Slam. Ballistic Slam, I think it breaks their shields and you get like 7 meter melee distance. 
So I don't even think you need synthes ups. I would agree, but remember I said it's a comfort pick and this is the whole population. The whole population is not capable of something like activating knockout frequently. So they just want the raw melee. <laughs> You, you play the I, I know it's a slight roast, but like it's the truth. <laughs> these are these are not about the true um, absolute meta. This is the bang for your buck picks. This is what getting this is what is getting people results, regardless of their skill level. Peregrine Greaves, I think, might artificially be this high, despite me seeing it equipped on some people. What the top teams do is they wear dunes and then they switch to Greaves. But I still think wearing Greaves the whole time is worth it just because of the aerial effectiveness. I do Which use Dunes frequently, by the way. I use Dunes with Ballistic Slams over Synthesep because I value the slide and sprint more than I value native melee lunge. Which is funny because if I wanted that, I would just play Warlock with a Vidian Aspect. Let me see how much Peregrine gives you. 20. 20, yeah. 20. Ah. Pretty sure it's 20. Yeah, I just checked it's 20. Uh, this solar hunter represented a representation at 12.3. I'm curious how many of them have young Ahamkara spine. I've definitely noticed that exotic on the rise beyond it just being like endless veil weekend or something with a lot of adjacent wall uh, nades. So I think that accounts for a lot of the solar hunters. Also stompies you know with solar hunter makes sense because your throwing knife isn't subject to AE penalties. I do find it funny though that uh, now that we like we're seeing more usage of other hunter exotics, but also stomp, like stompies is still up there. Like it's I like said, it's, it's more of a comfort pick. You really do have to be just built different, like Drewski or Walla or someone like that, to make stompies that good. A lot of them just throw it on because it feels better to use it. Like a shout out to my dad. My dad was playing Destiny the other day, and he goes, "Cam, what's this number over here?" And it's the power level, and I had to explain how power leveling works. And so he had a worm husk in his inventory and a stompy in his inventory. He's only a PvE player at the time, right? And my brother's been kind of helping him out. So I explained what infusion is, and I say, oh, you're playing Solar Hunter. Solar Hunter has the healing grenade, so you don't necessarily need worm husk. If you're able to just use it with stompies, you can use either. And he's a, he goes, oh, okay, I like stompies. I can go fast with them. It feels good. And I was like... We've added another one to the list, boys. <laughs> yep. Another Stompy another Hunter one. is born. Oh no. And there's when there, you're him his first black uh, all black suit. There is a stigma for Stompy users being coincidentally toxic or like rage quitting matches frequently when they're not winning. But Stompy's also used to just be the definitive best in slot with no trade off. So the difference is now that there's a trade off, it takes a really special kind of player. To make them as good as they deserve to be. That's what I want to convey. Back in the day though. I would also say that it takes a tourney player. To reach the ceiling with these. And a lot of low skill players. Would have been better off just equipping Wormhus Crown. I think I had a video titled something along the lines of. You are not a tourney player. And talked about the same concept. Okay now I want to talk about the stasis representation. Uh, no, before that, I want to talk about Sentinel representation. That's the other part of the meta, I think, that isn't as represented as it is if this was just a top 1% list. Sentinel wins games on just giving a free overshield and having the super economy to close out a 5-0 game on a team that would otherwise have an opportunity to come back when they get their own supers. The thing is, you win before they get the supers, so you just win. That's why Sentinel is good. Not to mention, you still get to use Peregrine Greaves to kill other supers, you still get Suppressor Nade if you want to switch to it. And Spike Nade is one of the best stalemate breakers in the game. So, there's that. Now we get to Stasis. Shout out to the 2% Shade Binders. They're knowers. Shade Binder. <laughs> no matter what has changed in this game, no matter what is meta, Gear Falcon, whatever, Shade Binder has a place. It's just how hard the Shade Binder wants to work to stay relevant. I think uh, as Invis gets more popular... Throwing roof turrets is absolutely going to be a thing. I know from the Endless Veil Weekend how much work it takes to make it consistently fast and knowing when to use it. But once you put in the work, it's worth it. You get into those later rounds of trials, you have a roof turret, starts hitting the invis hunters when they least expect it. They just panic, shoot a tether at nothing, and you laugh at them. And then you pop your boss super and win anyway. It happens. It absolutely happens. Now, Remnant Hunter... 
I'm surprised that it's 1.9. I'm actually surprised that it's not over Solar Hunter. And my reasoning is, Shatter Die being natively active all the time, or in neutral or whatever, is nuts. Being able to have something like Stompies and just Shatter Dive to the ground to get rid of that AE uh, negative penalty is insane. And I'm surprised more teams don't use it. I'm surprised that more teams don't use the Dustfield Grenade and the platforming that comes with the enhanced version of it. It's insane to me that it's only a 1.9% usage. Behemoth, I'm not surprised. And this is because of the super. It's not, not because I don't think it's a good class. When you see me play it sometimes, I think I pilot it very well. And I think I do a unique job at it too by using it with the Lion Rampant. You can do a Dune Marcher version with the Hand Cannon that's as good if not better. I just try to use it to be Dawn Blade at home. So Behemoth is still a really good class. It's just in the Trials meta, the super is not good enough to keep up with the other ones. Like comparatively... You could have a bubble and just win the game entirely, or you can have a thunder, class, a thunder crash slightly later and then be able to counter anything in the game, except for a Shadebinder Rift. It's always funny when that happens. Uh, past that, I don't really think anything else sticks out at me on this list. I just wanted to share this with you two. Some uh, first impressions on the Trials meta. Now... Someone always says in the comment section, well, what would you do to fix the meta? I would offer more options to build into AE. I would change the transparency on invis. And if I make it more visible, I would give it other bonuses, like maybe a longer smoke grenade tag. Start working on a fourth aspect for the void classes. Give them counter-strike smokes to pair with the uh, wall hacks ability through weakened grenades and that sort of thing. Give them another way to play. So that way it's not just pop invis, and run at the opponent with the special weapon. Special weapons are the next thing. The sniper rifle changes are amazing, actually taking flinch. Speaking of which, Arbalist needs to get hit with that type of flinch too, because Lorenz and Arbalist are up here for a reason. Where are the other snipers? I guess Macabre because it's recency, but I also think it's the best, so I guess that makes sense. Touching on that, actually, uh, it's still possible to get like shot through flinch with a sniper, but it's it seems like it's like gotten a lot harder. I yeah. usually get body shot by it, whereas previously it was just a headshot. Yeah, speaking from experience, I play with a lot of snipe, and yeah, it you can make it happen, but the time like the timing it requires, it's just it, and it's wicked inconsistent. Like you're gonna hit a body shot, you might get a hit marker. You're gonna have to like throw your mouse down the mouse pad. It's a very good change. I put about a thousand good. kills in last word, maybe three hundred before the change, and seven hundred after. I only pair it with the snipe. I would say I probably hit more than ten through flinch, and out of those ten, maybe two or three were headshots. That's a lot better than just have uh, trusting the heart of the cards and hitting the shot anyway. And it's the worst feeling to be in a control match, be on like a we ran out of medals or a streak, and then have a on paper bad players snipe you through flinch and you don't know if they're just a good player or if they're lucky then you look up their stats they're like a 0.6 kd or something like that and it, it just doesn't make sense they're just gifted the shot for free it's not a good feeling i think arbalist needs that same level of flinch at the very least and if you ask me this is how snipers should have launched in destiny period to begin with uh, i think that covers the meta analysis from just looking at these new data points Shout out to Drewski and Glow who used to collect this type of data by hand. I don't know what magic trials report is pulling, but it's much appreciated and I would love to see more specific uh, data ranges of this if possible. I would like to see what are teams with a 90% uh, win ratio or 80% win ratio using. What does their distribution look like? Uh, past that, I hope this video was thought provoking. Let me know in the comment section what you think. Again, this is just an analysis. I could be completely off on this, but from the games I play against other good players, this is just my observations. Thanks, everybody.